Snaggle, slithery temptations. Finally, a silhouette of structures resembling a city emerged. As they drew nearer, the outlines filled in with splashes of vivacious colors. The princes, who were green to the way of life in the city, gaped in awe at the urban kaleidoscope before them. To the observant ones, who possessed the enviable third eye, the prince's city life ignorance must have been clearly discernible. For no sooner had they begun to surround the metropolis jungle when two odd-looking, stocky vagrants approached. One of the intruders leered at them, while the other began to dance in circles around them, darting his slimy tongue from side to side as he examined the princess closely. Nedris noticed how unkempt the two strangers were. Besmirched in mud, they were rather short in length, but they moved with sturdiness and confidence, like well-adjusted city folk. Their scales were dirt brown with tinges of red. The distinctive tips on their tails struggled to remain naturally black. Instead, they were drab gray. Nedris communicated his disapproval of the stranger's blemished appearance to Ophis, for they could certainly use a dash of water to brighten themselves. However, the most unusual feature about them, thought Nedris, were their narrow pointed heads, which culminated in snouts, most unlike any serpent he had seen. Ophis winced at the vagrant's nauseating yellow eyes, which were unlike the golden color of a sunflower, but instead like the decayed yellow of stained teeth. What a foul-looking pair, exclaimed Nedris, unable to contain his disapproval any longer. Ophis encouraged him to remain silent. Well, well, no school today for the two of you, stated one of the vagrants. It was hard to know whether he was asking a question or making a sarcastic statement. Playing truancy, are you? scoffed the other. You don't look like real graduates to me. But Ophis responded swiftly to their cynicism. Well, you have miscalculated. We are recent graduates. Kindly move aside, Ophis requested of the strangers, so my brother and I can proceed to the city. We do not want to miss the soaring Serpentine's show. Hmm, I could tell right away it was not city folk like us, replied the first stranger. Too regal, I say. Hope the palace folk know of your whereabouts, added the other. Ophis and Nedris glared uncomfortably at them. I'm Scraggy, by the ways, and the other half right here is Jaggy. We're kind of like brothers, too, if you know what I mean. Well, we are brothers, replied Ophis, looking defiantly at Nedris. Blood brothers. You don't say, teased the vagrants. Why, the two of you look like twins. There ain't no difference between you. Yes, there is, insisted Nedris, although he refrained from showing the vagrants his imprint at the back of his head. Our father once warned us to beware of strangers, he suddenly added. We should listen to him for once. So please move aside so we may continue on. What do your father know? Not too much, in my opinion commented Jackie. Did anyone ever tell you how kind of snobby you are? exclaimed Scraggy scornfully. You seem to be controlled by your deepest, darkest passions, young fellas, interrupted Jaggy. Well, there ain't no emergency to see the soaring serpentines. The show plays every two hours, so ain't no rush to get there. Anyway, the show stinks, except for a few pretty gals who know how to break a guy's heart. Well, good luck to you anyways, the vagrant added. Be careful, though. It's kind of hard to find your way in this place. Yeah, and the folk in the city are real confusing. They'll have you chasing your own tails before you know it, warned Scraggy. The princes looked around with unease at their unfamiliar surroundings. Eh, perhaps he's right, Ophis, said Nedris. Maybe we ought to head home, look for Sage Raja, and forget all of this ever transpired. It was all nonsense, anyway. The scent of jasmine, the enchanted garden, and the snaky sign. It was just too good to be true. Maybe the red sign misguided us. And perhaps there is no such show as the soaring serpentines. The sign? Of course it was real, replied Ophis. The show? How can you question it? Sage Raja made a promise to take us to see it. And home? Where is that nowadays, Nedris? shouted Ophis. I'm not sure anymore. Are you? 
Like these vagrants over there, we two have become strays. Nedris was in no mood to listen to his brother's nonsense. He turned around and began to slither back in the direction they had started. But Scraggy implored them to stay, and Jaggy at once pasted on a miserable face. Scraggy, the busker, began to recite his slick street poem. The act attracted many onlookers. He encouraged Ophis to slither closer. Nedris, who had not gone far, overheard and quickly made his way back. Ye youngsters, perhaps even the king's sons, aid us weak ones, ye wise ones. Help us remember our kin, for we hear your growls in our sins. Pity us, for we have strayed far from where we should have stayed. Forgive our roadside manner, assist us. We're so tired of riding the rolling bus. We are like the serpent wolves that shall surely guide ye like raging bulls through the strange and mystical metropolis. A witchy city of villains this place is. Beware, for without us he shall be misled, and perhaps abandoned in the kingless kingdom of dread. Hail to the homeless, cheered the crowd, for out of the gutter rises not smoke but great poetry. Did you hear him? whispered Ophis to Nedris. Both had listened intently to the vagrant's verse. They need us. They revere us, exclaimed Ophis. Besides, we need them too, for they describe the city as a village of villains. Maybe we ought to reconsider and let them tag along. You've got to be kidding, replied Nedris sharply. They're nothing more than trouble. I smell a rat, too, in this instance, foul and filthy. I don't trust them. They're an odd couple. Amid the disorder, a slithering police officer arrived on the scene and quickly dispersed the chanting crowd who were incited as they shouted, Hail to the homeless! Hail to the humble! Why all the commotion? asked the officer earnestly, as he stared with disdain at Scraggy and Jaggy, who had taken refuge behind a garbage bin. Then he noticed the princes standing on the side. Howdy, kings. Is everything in order? You appear to be out of place here in the city. Oh, don't mind them, officer, hissed Jaggy, crawling out from behind the bin trying to straighten himself out and look a little more respectable. Actually, we're just about to give him directions to the circus downtown. Hmm, I see, replied the officer, unconvinced. Well then, I guess I was suspicious for no reason. He peered at Jaggy again. I'm not quite won over, though. Just looking at you makes me realize how strange this world really is. Then the officer turned to Ophis and Nedris. You take care, young fellows. Don't get yourselves tangled up in trouble, for it ain't difficult to do in this town. If you need me for any reason, here's my card. He slipped it between Ophis's forked tongue. It has directions to the nearest police station. Before he departed, the officer had a suggestion for the vagrants. The two of you look like you've been rubbed in rags. You could do with a good city bath. There's a communal puddle of water around the corner. Take my advice and use it. Furthermore, if I hear reports about any conniving behavior from you, Jaggy, or your slimy pal Scraggy over there, I'll make sure you're both coiled behind bars. Come to think of it, added the officer, I could have sworn I've seen the two of you down at the sheriff's office before. Then the police officer disappeared. There were more serious crimes to deal with than two scheming hobos. Yet as soon as the officer departed, Jaggy confiscated the card from Ophis. Give me that he hissed. You won't be needing it. We'll take good care of you fellas. You'd better believe him when he says that, exclaimed Scraggy, for we know the ins and outs of this city blindfolded. We may not look as royal as you, but we are sure to treat you like saints. Come on, nay, J.D. impatiently. We're going to show you guys a good time. Straight ahead of them, a tall stone wall stood steadfast as a fortress, and behind the wall a fascinating city. As they approached, there was a plaque on the wall which read, Welcome to Shantytown.